What is going on Guardians, Evade here and welcome back to Destiny Guides. Now I just took a step away from the Sony press conference at E3 because they put out a new Destiny 2 trailer and this is obviously for the expansion Forsaken. This is a little teaser at the story and some pretty crazy events that are going to happen. So take a look at this and we're going to analyze everything right after. So that right there is pretty freaking crazy if you ask me. I made videos months ago discussing Cade's death and even one, you know, about two weeks ago involving data mine files in Warmind and then also the vanilla release way back in September. So from this trailer it looks like Cade is going to die or something really bad is going to happen to him. Now he's an EXO and he may get rebooted, I mean we'll talk about that in a bit, but let's progress with the trailer. So this trailer begins with Kate 6 in the center looking up, surrounded by a bunch of fire and dead bodies. There's also some type of giant what looks like teleporter in the background, and you'll see that at various times throughout the video. As it pans to the right you can see Kate's ghost which gets shot out of the sky as well, and most likely killed or severely damaged. So this is where it gets pretty sad, you see these scorn fallen coming out of the dust, out of the rubble, and then it pans to some character holding up Kate's hand cannon, the Ace of Spades. He's had this weapon since the first game, it's his signature weapon, you've seen it in Destiny 2 before, so this random person just, you know, holds it up and inspects it. Now it isn't until he turns that you realize this is freaking Prince Aldrin. He then puts a bullet in Cade's head, we see all these fallen, you know, scavenging towards the body, and then Aldrin just walks towards the portal. Now the last thing we see is the title of the expansion, Destiny 2 Forsaken, with, I'm assuming is our guardian, carrying Kate out of here towards this reef location. So, so far from what Bungie showed us about a week ago with the reveal of Forsaken, is that this expansion is going to start with a prison break in the reef. These scorned enemies are being set free, we can see Kate here flying around on a shank, and you gotta go there and stop this madness. Now it is now pretty clear that Prince Aldrin is leading the Scorn, and his true intentions may finally be revealed. In the first game, he was very friendly with us, him and his sister. He was always kind of sketchy, you know, you had that feeling that he was against you for some reason, but he was always pretty nice to you. You want to turn it into a battleground? How unimaginative. In Destiny 2, this is the complete opposite, and let's discuss how this exactly may have happened. So although something bad happened to Cade, this may be the best expansion yet because of the enemies we're going to face. Yes, we're fighting the Scorn, they're one of the main enemies, but at the top of this seems to be Aldrin, a guardian, you know, someone that was once on our side turning against us. Some things we never had in Destiny before is, you know, a betrayal like that, and also we've never had a major character death besides the Speaker, but they didn't really make that seem like he was a big character, and I'm sure Cade is more loved because we've seen him a lot. So in the trailer, a couple of things to note, um, not much because it's pretty self-explanatory, but there is a logo that it does appear on Prince Aldrin's chest piece. I don't recognize this, if you do, tell me down below what it means, but there's that. We can also see his cloak which may have some symbolism as well, um, there are some yellow shades on there which could reference the House of Kings and we'll talk about that in a bit, but definitely pretty crazy. 
So a question may come to your head, why would Aldrin turn against us and what the heck happened after the Taken King? You may have thought his ship blew up right here, but it actually did not. So you may remember from Destiny 1's Age of Triumph, the last update to Destiny 1, they implemented a Grimoire card called Ghost Fragment the Reef 4. Now this is the one where Aldrin meets with some type of fallen leader, and I'm going to read that in a second here, but I just now realized the name of this card, it's Ghost Fragment the Reef 4, which was most likely hinting towards this all along, and let's go ahead and read parts of this. So it says he let his captors drag him through the dirt. His arms ached, two hands wrapped around each bicep like iron bands. He slumped, and the toes of his scuffed boots bumped over the stones and left trails in the dust. He kept his eyes low, a ragged and stained cloak hanging over his face. It was not a position to which he was accustomed. They debased him. They abused him. He bit the inside of his cheek until the blood filled his mouth. He struggled not to resist. They needed to believe that he was broken, that he was not going to be a threat. It was the only way they would bring them before their Kel. He'd spent weeks weaving the illusion that led the Fallen to him. He'd left bits of his trails where they couldn't help but find them. He skulked from planet to planet, Mars, then Venus, then Mercury, then back again, following rumors and whispers. He'd hid from the Guardians, from his own people. He'd let everything they had built just fall apart while those still loyal to him searched every inch of this forsaken system. Now it's time to stop searching and start building. He would need soldiers who answered to him and no one else, bodies to shape with will and magic and tech to his needs. These would serve. He thought they would take him to a catch, but they were deep underground. Not near the Cosmodrome, but it didn't matter. He'd never been particularly concerned with the geography of this blasted world, because it was not his home. So he bent his head low and listened to the string of hisses and clicks issuing from the maw of the would-be king in yellow a broken ruler of a broken house, and the last of his kind. They were more alike than he cared to admit. When the creature's anger had burnt itself out, he raised his head to look at it. He did not need to speak. One kel rises, and another bends its knee. And the prince felt a little hum of starlight ripple through him, the one that let him know that she would be pleased with what he had done. So you've heard me read that card before, it's not a new card, but now with us actually getting this trailer and this information, it makes much more sense. Now in here it says he thought they would take him to a catch, but they were deep underground, not near the Cosmodrome, but it didn't matter. So this made me think at first, hey, it's Ghost Fragment the Reef 4, maybe they took him to the Reef, to this prison, to talk to some type of scorn. Now to me that part doesn't really make sense, because he talks about it being a planet, and this place was not his home. So in terms of that description, probably isn't the Reeve, Bungie could have changed it for the sake of the expansion, but yeah. So after the events of the Taken King, he crash landed on Mars, yes I know Mars, that's a pretty far reach, but that is where he ended up. We can see his ship in one of the Lost Sectors in the Warmind expansion that came out less than a month ago. Ghost talks about how it's Aldrin's ship, and wondered if he knew anything about Rasputin. It's a crash ship that bears some fallen insignia. Let me check the logs, see if I can figure out where it came from. It belonged to Prince Aldrin. What is it doing on Mars? Do you think he knows about Rasputin? So after he crash landed, he said something went missing and he needed to find it. Sometime later, he let himself get captured by the Fallen to meet with their Kel. Now in the card, it sounds like it's talking about the House of Kings, but in the trailer, this definitely looks like the Scorn. So I may make some type of other video discussing that whole situation, but for now we know that Aldrin has been recruiting. It says now it's time to stop searching and start building. He would need soldiers who answer to him and no one else. Bodies to shape with will and magic and tech to his needs. So Aldrin has some type of goal and the Guardians are in the way. This also then brings up the question, was this Mara's plan all along? We know that she still is alive out there somewhere, and you can even hear it in those cards that he felt a little hum of starlight ripple through him, letting him know that she is pleased with what he had done. So was this the plan in The Taken King, to have Aldrin lead this broken house known as the Scorn, or is this something that was just developed afterwards? Now this also makes me question the House of Dusk. We've heard the name before, it's never confirmed in the game at all, but is this what Aldrin is calling the group he is leading now, or is this something totally different? 
Now we do know it still kind of plays a part because we see their logo in the expansion with um, the Gambit leader holding up a symbol here, but I guess we'll have to wait and see to find out more information. Anyway Guardians, thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. Let me know down below what kind of videos you want to see regarding this information. Would you like more stuff on Aldrin and the Queen? And what forsaken topic should I make videos on? Please be sure to like this video up if you enjoyed and subscribe for some more awesome Destiny 2 news and entertainment. My name's Evade and I'll catch you all in the next video.